You're listening to Dock and Roll Radio. My name is Karen Shook. We are here for 9 to 10 a.m. Or if you're listening at 3 a.m., well, 3 a.m. to 4 a.m. That is the joy of Listen Again, which you can find on the Soho Radio website. For those of you who are listening live now and are thinking, hey, what did you guys talk about in April? You can go find out. Well, listen. So part of the best bit of this job is seeing films before other people see them. Uh, I just watched Free, behind the scenes of the Free Party Movement, a the first feature film made by Alessandro Ugo, who is sitting opposite me now, looking like the cool Milano via London guy he is. So... Alessandro has made commercials, music videos, documentaries, looked after events, made short films, and uh, but there's a big leap toward making a film. Now, Alessandro, I want to know, you grew up in Milan, you decided to come to London to study. Were you a, This is a music documentary and a great one. Were you a music fan when you grew up in Italy? And what about when you came to London? Did it live up to your expectations? Hi, Karen. So, well, first of all, thank you for having me here. So glad to have you. You, the Dock and Roll crew. So to answer your question, uh, when I arrived to to London to finalize my uh, film studies, to be honest, I had no idea I would get into documentaries. You know, I started, you know, like a student just into the post-production world. So I would have never thought to become director and producers, but, you know, um, along with uh, your student's career and the more professional career, you know, things develop and change. And uh, yes, I was already a big music fan. I would say that most of my money <laughs> finished into uh, concert tickets or, you know, clubbing or going to free parties. You know, I've never been uh, too attached um, to just one uh, individual scene, but I always like to be... Uh, pretty heterogeneous so every weekend or weekday mm. <laughs> I would go to a different event and uh, slowly slowly I try to you know merge my passion for music and the, the emerging uh, passion of uh, um, documentary making uh, into my passion of you know going to free parties and trying to you know recreate a, a, a work which initially you know was thought to be uh, pretty small, like kind of a one-off interview. Right. Uh, oh, okay. So you didn't have a feature in mind when you started making this? Initially, no. Um, so if you want, I can give you a little bit of background. I would yeah. love to hear it. And and I should mention to listeners, I, th- I, I think it's fair to say, uh, although I'm no expert, that um, uh, Alessandro, you managed to capture insights from a lot of key players in the film. This includes 69DB from Spiral Tribe, massive, but, you know, the pioneers, yeah. Matt Weasel Busters, Chris and Aaron Liberator, Shock Raver, N- Randy909, the Narcotech crew, and Asterix. So it's kind of like the royalty. Oh, did I say that? Um, of <laughs> the British scene, French scene, Italian scene. But yeah, tell me how this film came about because there's a big jump from going to a free party to saying, I'm going to spend. A, a long time making a All film right. about it. <laughs> so, well, the very spark of the of the film, I had idea when, uh, you know, like, uh, uh, I kind of just arrived to London and a friend of mine told me, you know, uh, Spiral Tribes are playing, are playing. I say, yeah, let's go. And I say, they're playing in a club. And I was, wait, what? So they're kind uh-huh. of the godfather of the techno free party movement. And right. I got to spend 25 pounds. <laughs> So Isn't it supposed my, to be free? <laughs> exactly. You know, in my head, yeah. I was kind of, what's happening? But only years later, I realized that was a bit of immature of me thinking that. So I tried to, you know, kind of gather information. So what brought, what's bringing uh, DJs and producers who started a free party movement uh, to start playing into commercial festivals and clubs? So, you know, I approached um, a couple of artists. I realized, they, you know, uh, I would like to do like a small interview. And they absolutely loved the idea, the structure that I sent to them. Oh, uh, because I was one of the very first that was giving them um, uh, an opportunity to talk not about the usual cliches about free parties. So like loud music, drugs, drugs uh, it's crime, illegal, crime. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, like what's happening behind and what... You know, it's a massive scene which has been going on for over 30 years. So yeah. they were all very enthusiastic. Uh, 
And, uh, you know, like I interviewed the first one who introduced me, the second one, right. the third and so on. And uh, everyone I approached had a, a very positive uh, uh, reception about uh, of the project. Uh, so what I wanted to do was investigating, uh, um, again, how techno music uh, started as a you know, very niche um, right very niche music, uh, especially mostly played, you know, in illegal uh, events. And then it became so popular that now it's, you know, kind of internationally accepted. Mm -hmm. And um, for this reason, uh, I wanted to start from, you know, the British scene where, yeah. you know, the first Acid House in the late 80s happened, uh, developing into the first uh, uh, techno free parties, technivals. And then when Spiral Tribes been uh, kicked out yeah. of the UK, you know, they finished in France and they brought the, you know, the techno free techno parties in uh, all over Europe. Um, so I wanted to literally study everything and uh, no one, I, I, you know, before doing this film, I watched so many um, documentaries about uh, free parties, but I couldn't find anyone uh, that would be uh, 360, de uh, 360 degree um, immersive. Right. Uh, they would give so much space to uh, producers and DJs who've been some of the most influential parts of the scene voice to, you know, to give their experience. Mm -hmm. I thought it was quite interesting that uh, you managed to bring in uh, similarities between uh, people I thought would have a very different experience. So people from the French movement, Italian, and the UK. Uh, those of us in the UK know a little bit more uh, about the UK one. And of course, we're aware that, that these these um, free techno parties have happened in a number of places. Did you, as, as an Italian, feel like you had to get the Italian story in there? Is it significant or...? or um so for uh, for the type of film I did, I would say yes. Mm. So in parallel uh, to my film, there's another uh, very great filmmaker, uh, Aaron Trinder. Right. I'm sure you know him. Um, he's doing a very similar documentary of mine. Uh, however, he's focusing on the British scene. Right. Of course, uh, talking about myself, I wanted to bring in uh, the Italian... Italian as rest of Europe uh, outside yeah, the yeah. UK scene yeah. because you know coming here I I found out there are quite quite a few differences like what so first of all uh, when you talk about a free party in Europe Europe again not UK mm. um, you usually specifically link into the concept of uh, uh, techno music, you know, right. the one spelled with a K. Like Tech, I was <laughs> going to say, for those of you who are listening, you can't hear it, but this is techno with a K, okay? I'm, I'm down with that. that. <laughs> so uh, mo most of the time, generally speaking, you go to a free party in Spain, France, Italy, and you have banging 180, 180 BPM. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and you have certain kind of people uh, cert with a certain style, defined style, right. underground style, going to free parties. However, I still remember my first free party in UK, I arrived and there was drum and bass. Right. And I was, what's okay, that doing what's here? happening? And my <laughs> friends was, yeah, no worries, uh, later it's going to be an MC starting to rap. And I was, <laughs> wait, what? So it was really different. This isn't how we do it in Italy. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> and you know, like people who were not uh, necessarily part of the scene, you know, you could see people with a shirt. And, and I was, you know, initially, you know, coming from a different background, I was really confused like, what mm. the hell are they doing here yeah. but you know then with the time i started to love this because you know it was the day of everybody's accepted no judgment i mean whether you can even come with a tux you know yeah. <laughs> whatever i mean we're all here with for the concept of you know parting together yeah. no matter of you know the music or the style of your clothes so I was literally like uh, blown away in a positive way. So actually, I, I was I was really glad of you know uh, experiencing the uh, free party scene in the UK. Mm -hmm. um, and I've learned from this film that German free 
uh, free party techno sounds like a washing machine. Oh yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, there are. Uh, that's part of. Uh, I think it's Matt Wizard Busters, one of my favorite DJs. Mm, uh, mm. You know, he talks about uh, the the genre free uh, free techno or hard tech. Uh, um, which is becoming so popular because basically has no rules. So, uh, in the electronic um, electronic uh, music field, uh, you have certain musical rules for certain genres like uh, psy trance or uh, uh, raga tech or French tech. Uh, you know they have specific uh, uh, kicks, bases that work in a certain way to recreate just that specific uh, genre. However. Um, the word hard tech uh, represents a bit of all of them. So you can literally like space out going from uh, like the hip hop, uh, uh, 90s dance, and then going for more rocky uh, beat. So that's why it's really popular. It's, re- it's, re- it's really growing and can, um, you know, can, uh, many people uh, can join it. Yeah. You had a lot of really wise people speaking in this film. Did you have any heroes or anybody on your wish list that you needed to get in there? Steve Hillage, don't, you know, people giving um, some really quite insightful perspective. Maybe as a filmmaker, you were learning stuff that you didn't already know. Would that be fair to say? Uh, absolutely. So, like, uh, um, I'm just 35. I started this project, I was 28, and some of the people I was interviewing were at least 20 years older than me, so yeah. a massive uh, package of experience, uh, bigger than mine. Yeah. Um, so so you've never... been doing this for seven years? This film's been seven years in Whoa. the making? Oh, you want to tell <laughs> <laughs> Yes. I was... <coughs> it was uh, 2017. Wow. When I first approached uh, Matt Wizard Buster. Okay. Uh, he was living in Spain. I say, you know, like, I can't come there. And he was actually, you know, in a couple of days, I'm uh, uh, playing at Balter Festival, you know, kind oh, of nearby okay. Bristol. Right. You want to come there? So then he introduced <laughs> me to Mandy Dextros. Right. Who was an equally, they were organizing the festival. And then he introduced me to Chris Liberator, Aaron Liberator. Mm-hmm. Then I approached Boontown Festival uh, with the same project. And they gave me, you know, like a VIP uh, wristband so I could go anywhere, interview anyone Let I wanted. Let this kid in. He's okay. <laughs> Seriously. And uh, and that's where I, I you know, had the a pleasure of meeting uh, some of my heroes, you know, when I was a guy, like, oh my God, you know, <laughs> you exist, you know, just behind the console. And everybody was absolutely, you know, enthusiastic about the projects and very nice. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, I, I can say I learned a lot both for, for, um, from a musical point of view, but also for, from a kind of personal point of view, because, um, you know, like being part of the free party movement, it can happen that in certain periods it can become really difficult because it's right. easy to be carried away. You know, it's a right. I think I can imagine. Of, it's a bit of an extreme Late scene. Night. <laughs> exactly. So that really helped me to kind of uh, reconsider the entire scene for from more a cultural and uh, or countercultural yeah. and musical point of view. So yeah, yeah. What about your friends who, I assume, people you went to free parties with? Um, you must have been talking about this project over the years I'm doing this. Did Was anybody kind of like, yeah, I don't really think you should be showing people what's going on? Or is there a full <laughs> film in that? Or that's cool that you're doing it, but like, what's there to say besides we're there in the zone, in the music? Is that a, is that a story? What did your friends say? So my very own personal friends were all happy about mm. the project. Uh, however, <laughs> in the scene, uh, there were some of the, you know, the most hardcore um, free party goers, yeah. you know, who were kind of criticizing. What are you doing with the camera but, here, man? <laughs> but I want to tell you something. I'm happy that this happens because, again, the free party scene uh, is a bit of an extreme scene. You know, right. it's, it's underground. And uh, it comes from a very underground idea of, you know, like a, a leaving all the society outside. Yeah. Um, I don't want to say that the, the free party scene has lost completely its underground, its secrecy, right? Mm. But, you know, it's been going on for 30 years. So right. whatever we had to know about it, we do know. So I think that uh, 
by doing this documentary, I gave new uh, an, an opportunity to what to view it from different angles. Mm. Um, as I was saying earlier, mm. most of the uh, articles uh, or uh, uh, films just focus on, you know, drugs, uh, the illegality, uh, doing the, the free party on a private property, but none of them focus. So why do millions of people keep going every weekend to the party? So there must be a reason and they, it can be like just used to say my, my my grandma. Oh yeah, you know they're all uh, <laughs> idiots. They're all uh, druggies. I mean, there must be something more. Yeah. Uh, so I think that this this film uh, really helps to you know create a, a new point of view. I always say I try to make this film for my mum, meaning for someone who doesn't really no, know anything about it. Anything, not just you know the you know the. Uh, rave air the free party goer right. um but for anyone who wants to know uh, a bit more about the uh, this counterculture yeah uh, now do you think obviously as a filmmaker as someone who's involved in commercial work and you know um you've mentioned you know you work for big names pepsi sky arsenal dolce and gabbana san pellegrino and uh, um, also, you know, all kinds of things. London Fashion Week. As a as someone who's involved in your work, you're a professional. You have to go. You have to do the job. Understand what you're doing. Um, and so, of course, in a role like that, you're not only. Oh, I can only do this. Only country music. Nothing else. Or you know, <laughs> whatever. Only bowling. Um, but do you think that because you had some knowledge of the free party scene, because the music and the scene was significant to you that you made a different film or a better film than someone who like your equivalent who knew nothing about it uh i would say yes um i know many many people in generally speaking that you know are uh truthful just to one genre oh you know as you said i only listen to country i mm. only listen to rock only listen to techno music i always like to you know to be, uh, I like everything. I don't like Katy Perry, but <laughs> she's not listening today. Don't All worry. All right, fair enough. <laughs> but you know, I'm really open. I can go from Bocelli mm -hmm. for one hour and then put the craziest hardcore techno beats right, right. for another hour. And uh, and again, because I never only went to free parties, but I went to any kind of party. I think. Uh, that really um, gave me a, a different, you know, like a, a better point of view to create the structure of the film. Yeah, it's a brilliant journey. Now, uh, I've asked you uh, for some music. We're going to hear Vandal, Rolling Paper. This is something that Vandal has produced. He pops up in this film, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. <laughs> um, he's been really cool because uh, um, initially he couldn't do the interview, but literally just two minutes before he was about to play, he said, oh, you know, Ali, come, come, come. Whoa. We have two minutes. <laughs> Uh, so we sat down uh, and he said, yes, uh, he was really sorry he couldn't stay for longer. But again, I, I appreciate it so much. So he, he's a very cool person. It really sounds like you've got to think on your feet making a film. It's not like, come to my office at 10.30 and we'll, it's like, no, no, you got to no. go. <laughs> yeah. Bit of cinema verite happening there. Well, that was a drop. Vandal with Rolling Paper. Why were we playing that? Because my guest in studio today on Dock and Roll Radio is Alessandro Ugo, my chic Milanese new friend and the guy who knows everything about free techno festivals. And in fact, we're talking to him because we will be screening the UK and ex-Italy premiere of Free, behind the scenes of the free party movement I mentioned earlier on that you can buy tickets now to see it at Rio Dalston on the 9th of June, at the Cube Cinema in Bristol on the 11th of June, and in Nottingham at Broadway Cinema on the 22nd of June. Alessandro, we've talked about, you know, how fascinating this scene is. Obviously, you think so because you went from, from being a kid making it to just a young man making it, seven years in the making. Um, can you tell me that there are, there are some amazing scenes in here, um, big wide shots where where you see a free festival coming together, lots of people, key people in the movement chilling, 
saying saying quite yeah. you know personal and insightful <laughs> things. What are some of your favorite moments in this documentary? So I wish I could say I filmed all the footage you see, but it's not like that. You had a cast of thousands, of course. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> They're all actors. <laughs> I do. I thought so. <laughs> no, I had a uh, marvelous, amazing support uh, right. from the uh, free party scene. So I asked yeah. for uh, you know help in making the film. So they they sent me uh, pictures. They sent me uh, footage. Wow. While so for some of the archive, uh, I relied on uh, some of the you know some most popular uh, filmmakers of rave parties in the 90s. Right. Uh, you know, we created a, a nice partnership, which I think it really worked for, you know, such an independent film. And to answer your question, so mm. some of my favorite moments, uh, you know, are when, uh, um, actually we discussed it earlier, it's when we um, discuss in the film uh, the differences between uh, free parties in UK mm -hmm. and free parties in Europe. Uh, and also how um, how 1690B from Spiral Tribe uh, uh, deeply covers, you know, the, some of the problems of the free party right. scene. Because, right. You it's know, a very honest film, I, I have to say. Exactly. It's not all, yay, it's awesome. Exactly. You know, like for once, I also wanted to show something, you know, some things that do not work. and Needing to get paid. Needing it, to pay bills. It, Exactly. Um, you know, like uh, the, the free party scene, as he said, you know, went wrong uh, for the fact that, you know, it can't support itself. Right. You know, once it was much more popular, the idea of an expected donation, you know, mm -hmm. because they're doing something illegal and some system need money. So they need to get back their sized uh, sound systems, um, equipment, lawyers. And uh, quite rarely they have enough money, right? Um, so that's why some of those DJs and producers, you know, they did it for years. But you know, when you're maybe forty, you have kids, a mortgage, a car, right. you can't do it anymore. I mean, they say that's it, you know. Like, and at the same time, you know, you have a festival promoter say, "Hey, I'm gonna give you five k. You, you want to play in front of fifty thousand people? Are you gonna say no? I mean, you've been." Uh, working your ass off for 15 years mm. uh, making music and beats i think it's fair that you're paid back just because you come from the free party it doesn't mean you cannot bring uh, your music outside what's important is that you never forget where you come from right. and then you start talk shit about the free party as shock river says i also condemned it I also fully condemn it. That wouldn't be right. But most of these uh, uh, DJs, you know, they, they're still underground, mm -hmm. you know, even though sometimes they play in clubs and festivals. Right. That was quite interesting. I thought, you know, if you want to celebrate a scene, you could easily fill a documentary just with the upsides, maybe just like, hey, kids, make sure to drink some water, don't take too many drugs, but, but not to... and. Uh, at what point did you realize you had to talk about the structural and economic issues behind it, that it wasn't happening in a void? You know, talking about people needing to get paid, whether people think you're betraying things. Did you already know that or did that happen as you were making the film? Yes, no, that's happened since the very beginning. I would say that was the very first core. Um, as I was saying, uh, like the very first idea came from me going to see uh, Spiral Tribe. Well, of course, in a club, 25 right? pounds. <laughs> And then that then was I a started, lot of money back then. <laughs> yeah, and was, but then I mean, uh, honestly, I was happy because it, it gave me the opportunity to, un to understand. You know, like uh, I, you know, I started when I was sixteen, seventeen, uh, uh, going to free party. Yeah, you know, it's free. You know, I can dance for twenty four hours. Yeah, <laughs> but you know, but then you grow and you understand everything which is around. You know, not just the wall of speaker. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, I would say that, that that's the one. So the footage that you got sent to you, did you get what you wanted? Um, uh, obviously, there weren't massive film crews at all these places. And this a, a lot of it was before everybody had a phone in their, in their hand with a camera. So did you get enough to tell the story uh, in the way you wanted? Uh, uh, absolutely. So um, retrieving footage from late 80s, early 90s <laughs> has been really difficult. Yeah. Uh, there have been these two filmmakers who, again, I really thank them. Uh, for for creating this uh, kind of contract with you me. You want to give them a shout out? Anybody you'd like to mention? Okay, there's lots of people underground in the scene. People were very generous, weren't they? 
Yeah, uh, absolutely. You know, and then a uh, mm. uh, lot of guys, so there are a couple of guys, they basically go to the biggest free parties in Europe, more in the past 10 years, the, mm. with their drone. And, oh, uh, and so basically is that they, where they, the drone footage came yes, from? Yes, there's this guy called uh, Vatlin. He's got mm-hmm. his drone uh, and basically goes around. He's very respectful. I had a uh, great luck. I went to the UK Tech last year with him. Uh-huh. And uh, we got some amazing footage. And he's very easygoing. And he, you know, he can capture amazing footage. And of course, nowadays, people really, really like drone shots. And why so, wouldn't we? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, to get the big picture of seeing things come together. That was one of the most fascinating things that you cover in the film of people talking about, you know, where would you put the cars? Would you put them behind? Would you put them in front? How does yeah. it change the vibe? When's the last time you went to a free party, Alessandro? So um, I, can, I could say I went to kind of a half free parties, literally five days ago. Uh, you know, on the 1st of May, mm-hmm. you know, it's the kind of work, um, it's a, it, no working day. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so I flew to Milan because uh, I was going to Bologna to the film premiere. And when I land, uh, I realized, hey, today is the 1st of May, you know, they, so every year in Milano, they have a sort of street parade mm-hmm. with uh, uh, trucks playing techno. So the last time oh, cool. I went there, it was 15 years ago. Right. And it was kind of 10 times bigger. Right. And I've been there for 16 hours. Uh, this time I went just, you know, a couple of hours <laughs> being very more easygoing. Yeah. But yeah, I could say that was a free party. Yeah. Uh, now I have two kids, a mortgage family, so I, I don't really go that often. But every now and then, uh, maybe every couple of years, yeah, I you know I still I still have a go. Yeah, I would love to keep talking to you for ages. People who are coming to the screening in London on the 9th of June, there'll be a director Q and A. Somebody, yeah, you know, more on the ball than me asking questions. Doubtless. Also, uh, in Bristol on the 11th of June, there'll be a Q and A and in Nottingham on the 22nd of June. Before we go, one thing I've got to talk to you about is, um, you know, the kind of, um, just quickly, we could talk about this for hours, but tied in with the free party movement, uh, the techno party movement is the police and the state. So the Criminal Justice Act in 1994 in the UK, that, that uh, the Criminal Justice and Public Order Act 1994, repetitive beats, they're bad for you kids. And uh, <laughs> the yeah. strong arm of the state came down, but you're an Italian. So you too have a far right government. Uh, Meloni's government has brought in uh, something that kind of looks like a throwback to what the UK did. Am I right? Are Ex- free parties at risk? Exactly. Uh, so UK did this in 1984 to stop the free party phenomena. And now the, the new Meloni government in Italy has brought up, has created uh, these anti-free party laws uh, that can say imprisonment for organizers. Um I understand. That's worse uh, than having your sound system. Like, this yeah, is a far beyond what you would expect. Yes, right? especially because Italy doesn't have serious problems to tackle, of course, right? No, no. So good so that they're the, focusing the, the free on party repetitive is beats. The party yeah. number one. So, 10,000 yeah. euro maximum fine and six years in jail, maximum. Yes, it's. For having a free party. It, it, it's insane. It's insane. I understand that somehow we can improve uh, uh, some points of the free party, some elements that can be, you know, um, tackled in a better way. Maybe but, not uh, by jailing people. But not by jailing people and uh, creating uh, um, moods of repression. That's not how things work. That's not how things work. Are people... So what's the vibe? Are people scared? Uh, uh, Do you think I'll they're going to stop? Yes, people are scared because, you know, again, uh, once you, you... Maybe you could spend the night uh, in police station, have a few thousands of pounds. Now you risk six years in prison. I mean, that's very serious stuff. It completely destroys your life. And do you um, think this is this is... Surely the free party scene, while it's cool, while it's happening in Italy, is is that the greatest social problem? Did do you think there was a lot of uh, public, you know, like people who vote for Maloney calling for it, or do you think it's just because the kind of political view of people involved in free parties, they're like, nah, these guys are probably leftists. Let's shut them down. Yes, s- sadly in Italy, uh, people like to you know to point the finger and easily blame you know something they don't like as you know uh, the, the main 
problem, you know, like, oh, you know, uh, there's not enough work, things don't work, you know, immigrants, uh, yeah. uh, you know, ah, oh, the guys to go to free parties, oh my God. Um, why, Sounds you very know. familiar to British listeners. Yep, yep. here uh, it happened 30 years ago, here we have it now in Italy. Do you think there'll be a fight back? Or are people like, uh, yeah, let's just... Mm. I'm not sure if it's going to be like a kind of a fight back, yeah. but I'm sure that slowly, slowly, uh, you know, everything, as they say in the film, everything is cyclical. Yeah. So there, in these 30 years of uh, a free party counterculture, we had moments where, you know, it boomed. So we have these technivals of 100,000 people. And um, periods like this one where things you know, are getting smaller. Yeah. But, uh, you know, maybe in a couple of years, uh, the laws will change, you know, or maybe they just did it to kind of scare. So the uh, the organizer will understand it's, it was, again, more to scare than, than else. Right. So they will start to, you know, uh, grow again. But I'm sure that the phenomenon of a free party is, is never going to stop. Yeah. It's never going to stop. Thank you so much for joining us today, Alessandro. This is... A wonderful film. Uh, I've got to confess, I'm not cool enough ever to have been to a free party. But, you know, there's always a first time. And I noticed a few people in the film who are older than me. So I think I can, <laughs> I can give it a go. And when's the next time you're going to be at a festival of any kind? Commercial? Of, of any kind. Or? Well, um, do, 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 do. good question. I have any festival lined up. There's a bit of a oh party my. going on in London today. Um, well, I'm not sure the music's uh, really going to be... <laughs> Coronation Day. <laughs> I'm sure tonight there's going to be kind of some anti-Coronation Day free party. I'm sure. If they haven't all been arrested. Yes. Thank you for joining us. And anyone who wants to see this fantastic film, as I said, London, Nottingham, Bristol, coming up in the month of June. Grazie mille, Ale. Grazie a te. Ciao. Bye. Ciao.